Welcome to Finding Holiness, where we delve into timeless Torah wisdom, revealing the sacred in everyday moments. Join us on a journey to elevate your spirituality and discover holiness in every aspect of life. I'm your host, Rabbi David Kadosh, and together, let's embark on a path of spiritual exploration. I hope you enjoy this next episode. Erev Tov, just continuing where we left off yesterday, we had a very scary Zohar in our uh, Hakdama to the Sefer of Chafetz Chaim. <clears throat> the Chafetz Chaim continues, and he writes, O Tam Acher, another reason why the Torah states that the sin of Lashon Ara is so severe, Le Gode La Pegam Shebali De Avonaze is because of the great damage that results from the sin. Kal Yedeshe Adam Hu Pogemet Leshono Bediburim Asurim, when a person damages his tongue with forbidden words, he prevents any other holy words uh, that he utters from ascending above. Meaning you wonder why your tefillot are not working or your Torah that you're learning, why is it not having an effect? Here's your answer. Because you're the, after 10 minutes you're going and you're speaking so your, your mouth, your words, the holy words that come out of your mouth are not, not ascending. Here's another piece of Zohar. And contingent upon the spirit and other spirits. That these latter spirits are designated to seize bad or foul words. Which a person utters from his mouth. As to what happens when people later speak words of holiness. Vailon vailechayehon. Woe to them and woe to their lives. Vailon bei alma. Woe unto them in this world. Vailon bei alma deate. And woe to them in the world to come. Begin the ilun rochin mesavi natlina umila misava. For these repulsive spirits, the one that came from the evil words, take this foul word. Vekadapik barnash the batal midin kadisha. And then when later he expresses sacred words of Torah or tefillah. The foul spirits bring the foul words first before that the other words can bring go to Shamayim. And they sully, they dilute the expression of tefillah. And it's not ascribed to that person. You say the tefillah, by the time it gets there, it's diluted and they can't tell where it came from. And therefore the power of holiness is weakened at Kan Neshono. And that's the, the quote of the Zohar. Halo nireh ba'alim mizor ha-kadosh. Is it not apparent then, shekol divrei ha-Torah u'tfilah shelanu hem omdim ba'avir ha-shamayim? That all of the words of Torah and tfilah that we say are suspended. They're in space. Ve'enam olim lemala. They cannot go high. U'me'ayin tavo ezratenu. Where are we going to get assistance from? Leviyat ha-Mashiach v'kayoseh ba'zeh. Here we are praying for Mashiach. Okay, it's Semach David Avdecha Menat Atzmiach every day. One Mashiach cry with Bet Hamikdash Megillat Echad Tisha Beav, and it's not going anywhere. These words are just hanging around in space because of what we say. Vechasher Naamik Bezayinyan, and when you delve deeper, Dimsa Odjoter, you'll find more. Shemidvad Shahu Avon Plili Beasmo. Aside from the fact that it's a horrible sin, like we explained above, Odu Magdila Kilkul Bechol Haolamot, it greatly disrupts. And corrupts the spiritual world. And diminishes their radiance. Because it's common for so many people. To repeat this transgression hundreds or thousands of times in their lives. With even a minor sin. When you repeat it so many times, if you have one sin that's like a fine thread, and you repeat it over and over again, and you fold the thread again and again and again, it becomes as thick like a rope of a wagon. Like Yishaya cried out, Woe unto those who draw sin with delicate threads, and their sins become the ropes of a wagon. And this analogy is like a, a thread of silk. When you reinforce it hundred to, hundreds of times with other th- silk threads, it becomes a strong rope. How much more so this sin of, of, of Lashon Ara, 
שהוא חמור מצד עצמו עד מאוד, in and of itself it's an extremely grave sin, ורגילים לעבוד עליו הרבה והרבה אנשים, וכמה אלפים פעמים בימי חייהם, and yet people regularly committed thousands of times, והם מקבלים על עצמם כלל להישמר ממנו, without taking upon themselves to protect themselves from this speech. שבוודאי הקלקול למעלה הוא לאין שיעור, and certainly the destruction that it causes in שמיים, there is no limit. והחשבה לדעת זאת, so he says, I'm trying to figure out the following. מאין נעשה עליו הזה הפקר כל כך? How did this עבירה, he's asking himself, become so broadly disregarded? Why is it? You don't see people just eating chametz on Pesach non-stop, right? So why, why did this uh, uh, mitzvah become so disregarded? לעיני הרבה בני אדם in the eyes of so many people. והתבוננתי, I thought about it, שזהו מכמה סיבות due to several factors. להמון מצד אחד, some which relate to the general public, ולמדים מצד אחר, and some relate to those who study Torah regularly. המון אינם יודעים כלל, as to the general public, they're not aware of at all, שאיסו לשון הרע הוא אפילו על האמת. They don't know that the prohibition of לשון הרע is even on things that are true, true facts. ולבעלי התורה, as to Torah scholars, why are they guilty? אף אותם שנתפרד להם ונתעמד להם, even those to whom it is clear and evident שאיסו לשון הרע אפילו על האמת, they know that לשון הרע also applies to true facts. יש מהם כמה שהיצר הרע מטעה אותם בפנים אחרים. There are many of them that are misled by the יצר הרע with various justifications. אחד, one misconception is, שתקף מחשיף היצר הרע ברעיונותיו, את היצר הרע causes one to falsely conclude את האיש שהוא מספר עליו לחונף, that the person he is speaking against is a hypocrite. And therefore, ואומר לו, the יצר הרע tells the speaker, מצווה לפרסם את החנפים והרשעים. It's a mitzvah to expose these wicked people. It's a mitzvah to expose all these hypocrites for who they really are. And therefore you are allowed to say what you are going to say. Ufa'amim omer lo, and sometimes the yetzara tells this person, Halo ploni hu bal machloket. Isn't this person anyways a guy who loves machloket, who causes so many fights? Umutal esaper lashonara alav. Therefore, it's allowed to say lashonara about this person. ולפעמים הוא מפתה, other times the Yetzara persuades him to speak בהתרה דאפת לטה with an incorrect application of what he calls אפת לטה the אפת לטה which we're going to learn later on in the Sefer there are certain times where you would be allowed to say a certain statement which is when the original person said it in front of three people תלטה is three, אפה is faces in front of three people we're going to get to that later on ופעמים בהתרה דאפמרה, other times the יצרה gives a false license of אפמרה in the presence of the subject, so since he said in front of the guy who he was talking about, it must be that it's permitted and I can go repeat it. שמסכים בעצמו בעת הסיפור שהיה אומר לו אפפניו, the speaker decides himself as if he's relating the לשון הרע, שהיה אומר לו אפפניו, that since he would be willing to say it even in the victim's presence, okay, then I can relate the same information behind his back. ומגלה לו היצע הרע את המאמרים השייכים הזה, היצע הרע provides him with the statements of חכמים that are relevant to this argument. ואיין לקמן בכלל ב' ג' ח' and we'll see later on in rules number 2, 3 and 8. ופעמים הוא מפתה באיכות הדבר, sometimes the יצע הרע will persuade one to speak לשון הרע by making an argument regarding the nature of the matter. לומר שאין זה נכנס בכלל לשון הרע. He'll convince you to think, oh this is not even לשון הרע, it doesn't even apply. כגון מה שרגילים הרבה אנשים בעוונותינו הרבים לפרסם על אחד שאינו חכם. For example, many people, uh, לצערנו, will say, they'll publicize, a certain person, he's not intelligent, he's not smart. And, but they're not, they think it's not negative information. Hey, hey, he's not a חכם, he doesn't know much. ובאנו לזה לקמם בכלל, hey, we're going to see about this in rule number five. כללו של דבר, the rule in summary is as follows. היצר הרע פעולתו אחת משתיהן, היצר הרע operates in one, of two ways. Or שמפתהו שאין דבר זה נכנס בכלל לשון הרע. Either he convinces the person that what he's saying is not actually לשון הרע. או שעל איש כזה לא ציוותה התורה באיסור לשון הרע. Or the Torah didn't prohibit speaking לשון הרע about that type of person. So either the person himself is saying what I'm saying is not categorized as לשון הרע because he falsely thinks that saying true statements is allowed, or, or I'm just relating facts that's allowed, but it's not. Or, again, this type of person wouldn't apply. 
ואם רואה היצע הרע, את היצע הרע realizes שבאלו עניינים לא ינצח לאדם, that he will not prevail over the person with either of these tactics, הוא מרמה אותו בהפך. Now he deceives him with an opposite tactic. שמחמיר עליו כל כך בעניין לשון הרע, he makes the לשון הרע law seem so stringent, עד שמראה לו שהכל נכנס בכלל לשון הרע, to the extent that it appears that everything the person speaks is included in the לשון הרע category. ואם כן, אי אפשר לחיות חיי תבל בעניין זה, If so, it's impossible to live a normal life. It's impossible to live a social life. Unless I totally remove myself from all worldly matters because the laws are so strict and therefore I can't even say anything. And, uh, and this was the tactic of the first uh, Nahash, the first serpent in the time of, of uh, Adam and Chava. What did he say, Chava? שאמר, הוא סטר חווה, אף כי אמר אלוהים, לא תאכלו מכל עץ הגן. Did Hashem actually say, you may not eat from any tree in the garden? So what happened? The Nachash falsely suggested Hashem's prohibition was not limited to one tree, but included all the trees. But he exaggerated. By exaggerating uh, the extent of the Isur, of the prohibition, then the Nachash made Chava feel that it was impossible to abide by this rule. And uh, therefore, therefore enticed her to sit. And that's why she, she, she ate from the tree. So Yetzirah often does that. It tempts one to speak Lashon Hara by exaggerating the Lashon Hara uh, uh, prohibition. He'll continue uh, more. And by the way, this is still just the introduction. And uh, a lot more to say that we'll continue next week.